if Christ becomes your norm, through him you will be strong. Don't play with me, I am life. Uh -huh. Don't play with me, I am life. Uh -huh. Don't play with me, I am life. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I am a child of Christ. Yeah. Shalom, Ms. Fala. Welcome again to Reason and Truth Ministries, where we are continuing, or not continuing, but moving on to a new topic, a new discussion concerning the new man and who and what we are as a new man, new man, a new man. I could just put in the A, new man. Right? Hadosh Adam. And it's speaking about a new man. And while we were teaching the last few sessions, we were talking about the Christian or Judeo-Christian Judeo worldview on how we ought to give an answer for the hope that lies within us with gentleness and with respect to all who ask. And what we actually pull or take our resources from. We as Judeo-Christian, what we take, we take our resources from, we go back to the epistemological derivation of the lingular prima, meaning to say in translation, we go back to the root of language and the first commencement thereof of all language, which is known today as cuneiform uh, or the Hebraic language in the pictorial form, which is the aleph, the bet, the gamil, which is translated into from the pictograph, which is an ox head, a house, aleph ox head, house, bet, a camel, gamil, um, a delete, a doorway, right? And all these letters has been translated and evolve over time and this is where we are today in Greek, Latin, Aramaic, all these language, the root language basically are Hebrew, Aramaic, Greek as we know today and what they did, they take the language from the Hebrew and they translated it into Greek which is the Septuagint, the Hebrew into the Septuagint and from the Septuagint into Latin, German, and English, which was the last translation of those ancient texts. Now, the English, which was translated from the Septuagint, which is, the, which is a translation from the Hebrew into the Greek, which is known as the Septuagint, it is just a translation. And that translation now becomes an interpretation into the uh, Latin or um, English, whatever version. So now once you're translated from the Greek, it's no longer a translation, but an interpretation of a translation. So now you have a translation from the Hebrew. Now into English, you have an interpretation of a translation into Hebrew. So then the certain nuances is lost during translation. You know, like you heard the term lost in translation, because when you're translating Hebrew, Hebrew is a very um, relational language. It's very active, whereas Greek is very heady, esoterical, always in the air, like use a lot of abstract. Hebrew is very prag pragmatic, pragmatic, very interrelated. And what happened is that because of the evolution of language, words, letters, the essence of what the communicator need to communicate has been lost. So for us to truly get a grasp of what Yeshua is saying, or the author of scripture is saying, we gotta go back to the Autographer. This is why Moshiach Yahweh he said, now, I will give you shepherd Rohe after my own left, his own heart. Meaning to say, because we have a lot of highlings in the churches where they only care about their own pockets and they only care to give you what they what interpretation or what 
yeah what interpretation suits their fancies so a lot of translation to date as we know it as with all these different books we here at reason and truth what we use we use the holman's bible and the holman's bible gives you a a very um it's, it's closer to the autographer however there are still words that are that are um interpreted from the um the septuagint which is the greek translation and you have numerous translation out there. There, there there are schools and a panoply of bibles in the world front however you need to know what you're looking at and who is making this translation because with a lot of translation that you have today you have a lot if you if you're if you're muslim you get a muslim uh, islamic worldview a muslimic approach if you're gay or lesbian you get a uh, a gay or lesbian approach if you are um, feminist you get a feministic approach so now each Bible to suit every single person in the marketplace however Hashem Yeshua is not about pleasing mankind who did Yeshua come to please he came to please his father and his father only did he come to please man no way he didn't come to please man he came to please his father and because he came to please his father his word cannot be interpreted on the basis of how we need him to apply to us. Does God apply to us? Who God applied to? Well, who, well, who the Father applied to? Himself. He applied to himself. And in, apply, in applying to himself, because he is self-existent, he extended himself through his through his word one his son and his ruach hakodesh so so we have three extension well yeah three extension of who your i am that i am the tetragram is in expression in time space and matter which is what we deal with now we're dealing with new man, right? Hadosh Adam, new man. And this new man is what we are. We know of the first Adam and we know of the second Adam. Turn the Bibles to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. So what, what, what literally here is going on as we look at what we have just came off talking about a worldview, our worldview from the general revelation and from the redemptive revelation, okay? And this worldview that we have is in reference to what the whole world basically applies. We're talking about theology, philosophy, ethics, biology, sociology, psychology, uh, law, politics, economics, and history. Which, and, yes? The, uh, what did you say the other revelation was? The, um, the redemptive. redemptive. That's in black, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes, I, I rubbed it off. Oh, okay. okay. All right? Redemptive revelation. But this, I just love this because it, it, it's applicable to what we're doing, transitioning into this new man. Because regardless of the old man or the new man, that in itself, it's, it's what we ought to relate with and relate to. We got to. The old man and the new man. But how are we to relate with this old man and this new man? Because we can't, we can't stop re our relation with 
our physical state of existence. But yet still we have a new man in order now that we are contending with. Is that how we are contending with the new man or the new man is contending with the old man? And the old man and the new man is what we have to wrestle with. Why we have to wrestle with this old man? Because he wants to be what he has always known himself to be. But this new man, you must learn this new man. You must be taught who you are. If you're not taught who you are, can you now exhibit or fight or resist this old nature? Let's see what um, um, Roman says. Who want to read from verse 1? Yeah, read. What should we say then? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may multiply? Absolutely not. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Or are you unaware that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in a new way of life. For if we have been joined with him in the likeness of his death, we will certainly also be in the likeness of his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him in order that sin's dominion over the body may be abolished, so that we may no longer be enslaved to sin, since a person who has died is freed from sin's claims. Right? Since a person who have died is freed from sin's claim. Now, Paul is clearly articulating the transfer, the change of the state of one's person. And when he's talking about it, he's talking about the, the mind. The mind. Because you can't change in yourself. However, you go through that that activity of baptism, and you know who have been baptized and those who have been baptized today, they have what? Been buried with Christ and they rose in Christ. They buried with Christ and they rose in Christ. For what happened, there's a transfer, a transfer of state of being. So now you take on his sadiq. Sadiq is righteousness and you give him your head head is sin nature your sin nature you give unto him and when you give him his sin nature he gives you his righteousness what is his righteousness what does his righteousness constitute how are you to live a sadiq life how are you to be righteous from the Inside, panim, out. Pene. Panim, pene. Pene is face. Panim is inside. It's like inside your belly. And all what is inside a person, you can see it on their, on their face. You can see the, the, the whole nature of man on their face. If you're telling the truth, if you're lying, if you're angry, if you're happy, if you're joyful, whatever, State that you may be in, just look on a person's face. face. Some can hide it a great deal, those persons who are working in, let's say, uh, espionage, people who are into, you know, this type of lifestyle, and they dare to deceive, and deception is an art. To deceive a person is an art. And it's very easy for someone who has been born with that art to cultivate that art. The same way you cultivate deception is so now you cultivate this lifestyle, this new lifestyle that you all that have now come to be birthed into. Can a child say that they are not the children of a parent? They can. They can. However, the expression or the express image of that individual clarify, identify, certify that that child belongs to A and B. Because without A and B, C cannot come into being. You need A and B in order for C to, to exist. 
you can't have C apart from A and B. It's impossible. And what is happening today is that we tend to now say we accept Jesus Christ, but yet still we live as if A and B doesn't exist. C just came into being. And that's the nature of man. For we have been born and been bought to the price. Where reach chapter um, um, 6 or 7? Six. 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 Yeah, six. Go ahead. Oh, continue. Yeah, for we. For we. Oh, you go ahead. For we know that our old self was crucified with him in order that sin's dominion over the body may be abolished so that we may no longer be enslaved to sin, since a person who has died is freed from sin's claims. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him, because we know that Christ, having been raised from the dead, no longer dies. Death no longer rules over him. For in that he died, he died to sin once for all. But in that he lives, he lives to God. So you too consider yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ. All right, dead to sin. Dead to sin. Now, dead to sin. Moat. Okay, moat is is dead. You're dead. And how we define that? Def removal of a relationship. Yeah. Removal from the relationship. We can put in that prefix there, that that um um article. that article, that definite article. Removal from the relationship. And hear what he's saying here, right here. Good. Hear what he's saying here. Because we know that Christ have been raised from the dead, no longer dies. No longer dies. He have raised from the dead. What is that? Removal from the relationship. Now, if you guys have, and I know a lot of people have understanding about the death of Christ. And you know when Christ died on that hour, the earth went Dark, why it went dark? It shows that which was necessary for life continual, which is or oh, light. And we know in Genesis 1 1, he said, Now, and there and the light was there. The light, Genesis 1 1. Yes, the light was there. The light was there. God said, let there be light. So there won't any what? Sun, moon, but there was light. And that light is symbolic of who? Mashiach. Mashiach, who has always been there. Who wasn't there yet? Yeshua. So you say now, and let there be light. Right after he said, Bereshit bara Elohim et Hashemayim Havaretz Tovohu. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And he said now, Va, let there be all. Let there be light. So we see now, as things come into being by the aid or by the act of the Ruach HaKodesh, whose presence was made known in the world. Who is the light? We see in John 1, 1, 9, John 1, 9, he said, he is the light of the world. No, John 1, 4. He is the light of the world. But the, the world prefer yeah. darkness rather than light. So John is like a commentary on Genesis. So we're getting a clear picture of what is literally going on here. So now, you, you are being taught who you are from Scripture. Now, leaving this old nature and moving into this new nature. But in order to walk in this new nature, you must be taught who you are and what you are. 
Okay? Because we know Christ have been raised from the dead, no longer die. No longer die. So now, he died once. What, what death? Removal from? Removal from the relationship. Which relationship Yeshua was removed from? No. No, he wasn't sinful. That's right. He was removed from his father's relationship. For whom? For mankind. Who care about mankind more than anything else? Yeshua. Yeshua. Yeshua care about mankind more than anything else. Because he made mankind. He made mankind. He's the one that made all things possible. And we see that in Colossians 1. We see it in um, Philippians. We see it in the epistles of Paul. So what is really communi be communicated here to us is that the removal from a relationship is what has been our state. Because of the fall of man, we have been removed from the relationship. Which relationship we have been removed from? Yeah. Yahweh. And throughout the ages, he, has, he kept sending prophets, sending prophets, sending prophets, sending prophets. Why send prophet? Because it is of, of his rahamim, which is mercy. He sent prophet because of his mercy and his kindness, chesed, his loving kindness, his lev, chesed, his loving kindness. He keeps sending nevim, prophets, keeps sending them, sending them. Why he sending them? Because he care for mankind. And the more he send them, is the more Israel went uh, astray. Now Israel has gone astray up until to date. But... Now, right now, is the time of Israel what? Coming back. Into who? Mashiach. The days for the church is over. How we know the days for the church is over? How we know that? Watch what is going on. Every prophecy is unfolding one. Just read Daniel chapter 11. Read Zechariah. Read Joel. Read, read, read the, the, the scriptures. Read Revelation. Read it. And you're going to see all these things. Read Matthew 24 from 22 going up. Read it. You're going to see that Revelation is unfolding and all things is coming to be. And the Bible tells you in Revelation from 22 to 24. I don't want to speak too fast. Am I speaking too fast? No. Yes, uh, no. <laughs> all right. Let me sit along a bit. When you look at Revelation, what is literally telling you is that all these things must be. All these things must come to pass. Why it must come to pass? Because Yahweh we will accomplish all what is stated in his word. And he is faithful to what he started. He is always faithful to his Word. He don't ever go back on his word. His word, not one jot, no one tittle shall pass away. But all his word is going to be fulfilled. So now we see that moat, which is the debt, is what? Removal from? Relationship. Their relationship. Put in that definite article there. Right? And... For in that he died, he died to chet, sin. What he did? He took on sin. He became a chete. He became chet. He became a chete. Now, this is a very interesting word. He become a what? They, they translated as sin. He became sin for us. But most people will ask, how did Jesus Christ sin? How, how, how could he sin? How could he become sin? You see, this word literally is a sin offering. A sin, but look at something. What? had to be added to sin in order for it to be an offering. In 
In Paleo Hebrew, this is a the cross. This literally means to miss the mark as it's translated. Chet means to miss the mark. However, Chet, when you sound that word Chet, the only letter there is silent is the Aleph. The Chet and the Tet is pronounced. But what it's telling you there from a, from a, a drash perspective, it's telling you once you silence God in time, space, and matter, you will always go off course. You will never be on point. Even the word of sin or chet, anything it's ever saying, don't silent God. The Aleph is the Father. And the chet is that that line of demarcation that you must draw in your love, in your heart. And the tet is decision that you are making now based upon the line that you have drawn. So all this have to do with what? Self-examination. Every time you take communion, you got to examine yourself. See if you're hitting the mark. See if you're silencing the aleph. See if he is alive in you or you are on his throne. Whose temple is this? It's the temple of Hashem. He lives and he dwells in us. So now, with this death that we are now in as new disciples, as new Talmudim, Hadosh Adam, new man, which is now found in Christ, Shaul is telling us here, so you two consider yourself dead to what? You are dead to what? You are dead to what? Use the definition for me. The removal from? The relation. You are dead to what? The relationship of the old man. You are dead to the relationship of the natural man to this world. To how the world see? The Theos, God, how the world see what? Philosophy, apart from Aristotle and Plato. Ethics, based upon uh, Richard Rorty and these guys in them who makes up and they say now morality is based upon societal agreement. Biology, as they say now, you can be whatever you choose to be based upon the new ethics and new moral and all these new information that is coming down in our institution of higher education. Psychology is telling you now that you don't have a soul. You don't have a soul. You don't, that doesn't exist. But yet still they're trying to establish conscience. Consciousness. They're trying to establish that which they deny. Psyche, which is the Greek for Neshema, the Hebrew for that which gives you life, the breath. Sociology, which is the social structure. Now, all these things they are now telling us we can be all because. They don't know who we are and we don't know who we are and what we are. So now we have been, we choose to what? Bury that man that was alive to that way of thinking. The way the world thinks. So now we got to know how Yeshua thinks. How the one who calls all things to be, how he thinks, how he process infer. Information. And we are taught, we are called to process information the way he have taught us to process information. Sabara is the reason. And when you reason, meaning that which is now being created in your mind, you are now looking at it objectively, not subjectively there must be objective premises that is brought to bear on 
the Sabara. Your reason. Okay. But alive to God, alive to Yahweh. Yes. Lo Sadiq. Lo Sadiq. Unrighteousness. And you can only be unrighteous when you what? When you move away from the Darik, the way. Had Darik, that way, the way. Yeshua said, I am the Darik. Had Darik, the way. Ha Emet, the truth. Ha Hayer, the life. Yeshua. And it's all stated in scripture. But if we don't know scripture, how could we know what he is? Saying. So if we don't know the mitzvot, if we don't know the Tanakh, if we don't know scriptures, how could we know what he is saying if we don't know what he said? And he has always been speaking. His Shema. Amar. He said, Ka Ama. He said, Thus say it. That is written over 2,000 times in the Old Testament, as they call it. The Tanakh. Ka Ama. Thus say it, Hashem, Adonai, thus say it, Yahweh. And that is the signature of Hashem in your life. So now, even as those who have been baptized now have now been baptized unto what? Into his death and, in his, and rise in his resurrection. Now, how are you to live? You know, most 90% of the time when... We see people in this in this culture, they they are baptized and they go through that ritual that Yeshua said now, suffer it to be so, Yakanam. For this must be fulfilled according to scripture. That all who shall follow me, they must be buried and rise again. They must break up this relationship. They must show it to the world. So now I will confess it and rehearse it to the Father. Because when he looks down, it's not you he's going to be seeing. He's going to be seeing? He's going to be seeing me. So suffer it to be so. Let it be done. Because I must go through everything so that you would be without excuse. He was tempted in all point. As the book of Hebrews says, yet without sin. All points so that you are an overcome and those who overcome shall inherit the kingdom of Hashem. Hashemayim Elokinu. His kingdom, the kingdom of God. Those who overcome, overcome what? That which goes on in your mind. You see now, as you have heard, if you shall commit adultery. I tell you, if you shall lust in your mind, you have committed a sin. You have heard. If you shall look and you shall say unto your brother that he have an empty head, you are now in danger of hell's fire. Call him a sakal. Call him a fool. Who said to call him a fool? Yeshua. You say, you fools. You fools. Read the Proverbs. But don't tell them they have a what? Empty head because they don't. Because he addressed them in scriptures. He said, for they choose not to accept or willingly accept the things of Hashem. For they are spiritual and they are spiritually disowned. For the carnal man will not.
Dekomai is the Greek word there. Dekomai, meaning is to willingly accept. And to willingly accept, that means you could only will, willingly reject that which you know. So who's saying that how it's translated again there? Good point. In Corinthians, when he said now, the uh, foolish things of um, um, the things of God are foolishness to the carnal man, for they do not receive the things of God. Right? That day in itself, the way they translate it is like if a sinner can't understand this. Some of the greatest scholars in this world today write commentaries on this book. And they authenticate that this is the word of God. Yet they remain in agnosticism. <laughs> I can't understand this. It's like Kant and these guys. I can't understand it. Bart Ehrman, for one, who teaches it at Virginia State. I can't understand these guys, but yet still, they are agnostic in that they choose not to accept the facts for what they are because they choose to be God. Anyone who say they're agnostic, they are choosing to be God. How you can even say you don't know? To say you don't know is to claim knowledge of that which you don't. It's a contradiction even in terms. Such ignorant Immanuel Kant came up with that. But have the world in such chaos. Alright, this is why today, children, they bend the hand and say, Daddy, I'm a girl. Mommy, let's get all men to the moon. Don't need men. I'm a woman lib. You don't need men. Just have his, your sperm, get them out, kill them all. What's going on right now? Look at the research. All right, so now we are a new creator. We are a new man. We are Hadashah Adam. And this new man, we are to give an account. So now, how do we identify this new life that we now live? How do we identify this new life that we now live? We identify this new life as Person, character, and nature. Now, in order for you to identify yourself, and through this, what we have learned, these 10 basic principles, these 10 basic means of understanding all creation, person, character, and nature relate to everything that is made, everything that is in this existence, person, character, and nature. And the first person, character, and nature that we need to know as a new creation, a new Hadosh Adam, a new man, is what is a person, what is the nature of that person, um, the, the character of that person, and the nature of that person? So you're dealing with, uh, yes? Uh, would you say like those three components comprise a person's identity? Or I like how you said that. Thank you very much. And you all can be free to help me as we go along the way. I am just first among, I'm just first among, no, not many, equals. Equals. So once you, are here, is that two reason you're here? You don't know Yeshua Mashiach as you're supposed to. You're seeking Him alone who can give you life. I am just only standing here because He has called me to connect the dots so that it could be made clear and I can only use my roche, as a, my, my ra, as a roche, which is my eyes, as a shepherd to watch over you and give you direction for you to walk on this path. That's all. And being first among many because you are called also to watch. You are called to shepherd your house first. Then your community, then your environment, then your city, then your nation, wherever, according to what strata 
What's your vocation? What stature you may be in in this world? Because you are not of this world, but you're in this world. So now you must affect the world by him who now has taken dominion in you. And I don't like these words because they're very, they're very, um, they're very naturalistic, uh, Darwinistic. Power and dominion. Wicked words. Wicked words. Because it's only with Arist um, um, Thomas Aquinas who Aristotelian lies this whole Judeo-Christian walk. Woo. He Aristotelian is Ar Ar he use Aristotle's philosophy in order to present now this gospel. So also did Magmanides, he Aristotelianized he, the Hebrew culture. However, the Hebrew um, Judaism as we know it today is totally different to the Judaism that Moshe practiced. Three types of Judaism. There's the Judaism of Moshe, which is right at the time when they practice it because you must have the temple in order to practice Judaism. And if you don't have the temple, you can't. We just had what? Yom Kippur. And Yom Kippur means the day of atonement. And without the temple, you can't have an atonement. Yom meaning the Kippur means the covering. And that which cover man's, oh, I drop it off, right? It's gone. Chet. And the Chata, which is the, 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 the sin offering. That which is an offering. Is Messiah. So those who follow Judea um, Moshe Judaism, they look towards Christ. And because the temple has expired and is no longer there, all those who accept Moshe, they accept Yeshua. Because everything Moshe wrote point towards Yeshua. That's right. However, that's the first Judaism. Second Judaism is those who now came and accept Yeshua Mashiach, which is the church. So the Jews who follow Moshe accepted Yeshua as Lord and as King and as the fulfillment of Mashiach, um, um, Mo Moshe, the temple sacrifice, which is fulfilled Salim in um, Yeshua, they now become the church. The church of Jesus Christ, Yeshua Mashiach, his church, his new covenant. This Berit Hadashah, the Berit Hadashah, the new covenant, which is in Yeshua Mashiach, Jesus Christ. So now he becomes that new covenant. That's the second Judaism or church. The third type of Judaism is the Judaism we know today, which has been Aristotelianized and has been now portrayed as what they are, Hasidic, Ashkenazi, all these different Jews, there's so many different sets, just as they are Christian churches. And they in themselves, when they study their teaching, you will see how distant they are from Yeshua HaMashiach, because they rejected him. So they are not in alignment with Scripture with the Tanakh. They rejected Moshe. And if they reject Moshe, they reject Yeshua. Yeshua. So two types of Judaism is good. Moshe, but Moshe doesn't exist anymore. When I say Moshe doesn't exist, that which he carried, what he carried, the temple sacrifice. You don't have a temple, you don't have the articles, you don't have the uh, Ark of the Covenant. How can you now make a what? Atonement for Chet sins. You can't. So now we have the person, character, and nature. Which speaks to your I? Identity. So now this is what this is where now identity is being what? What? T-I-T-Y. T-I-T-Y. Okay. Well, I'll tell you later. Help me now. No, 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 no. I-D-E-N-T-I-T-Y. Yes, I'm trying to put it in there, but it can't go in. 
T before the T. Sound it out. Sound it out. Ident. I D E N. Right. I D E N I T I T. I Ident. Help me, man. Help me quick. Identity. 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 Okay, Identity. good. Yeah, you got that. Listen. <laughs> English. <laughs> don't shoot the messenger. And I, as I always say, yeah. and you know he um. As the dear old sister was just telling me, sung it out. You know, sometimes mothers be going so quick. You know, you take yes, take my time. You see, a little patience. Uh, patience is virtue. Right, we um, always got you back. Uh, <laughs> virtue is grace, right? Identity. Now, with identity, there is a sense of responsibility. Because without identity, you don't have a responsibility. You're not responsible anymore. You just. You just do what you want. Because the person, character, and nature, it now it solidify what and who he is and what and who you are. The what and the who is very important in relation to the Father and in relation to you, mankind. The what and who you are, it's necessary in order that we have what we call an identity. So now, what is a person? Somebody tell me, what is a person? Spirit, soul, and a body. A being with a mind. A being. A soul housed in a body. A soul housed in a body. A being with a mind, intellect, emotions. All right. So a person. Limited to humans. All right. Okay. Spirit, soul, body. So let's. So I'm rubbing off this here. Let me rub off all this here. So what is a person? What is a person? One, mind. What else? What are they telling me? What are they telling me? Well, intellect, mind, will, emotion, intellect. Intelligence. Mind, will, emotion, intellect, and intelligence. That is what a person is. So now we see if these five areas constitute what a person is, are, are human beings only, are persons only relate to human beings? Uh, you don't answer for me. I'm going to give somebody else a chance. A person only relational to human beings. Come on. A person only relational to human beings. No. Why? Sue so say yes. You say no. Why? Tell me why. What? Why what? Come on, talk, project. I can relate, the, share emotions. I can tell that. This animal here, mm. I can relate to it to an extent. It's not a person. It's not a person, but I. The question is, a person relates only to human beings. Maybe no, because things outside of human beings have identity. So, like the cat has an identity, you identify it as a cat. Mm -hmm. But that is what makes. Identity is what gives, um, well, 
identity is in relation, we talk, we're looking at person, character, nature. The person, character, nature of God, the person, character, nature of man. So now the question is, what is a person? We say a person is a mind, will, emotion, intellect, and intelligence. So I ask the question, are persons only relate to human beings? Does person relate only to human beings? Okay, no. Why not? Because spirits have a mind, will, emotion, intellect, and intelligence. Okay, that's the simple answer. Yet, yeah? say it again. Spirits have mind, will, emotion, intellect, and intelligence. Spirit have spirits. All spirit has mind, will, intellect, emotions, and intelligence. All spirit. However, spirit are not what. They're not human beings, but give me my next word. They're not human beings. Huh? They're not physical. Very well. Give me my next word. Corporeal. Corporeal. That's right. They're not corpse. They don't have matter. They don't have the elements of these things that we know for a fact. Yes. Actually, what you have there, those five. Mm -hmm. Mind. Will, emotion, intellect, intelligence. This is what you just described. I'll read what you just described. In Genesis, the first chapter, 26 verse, it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. What you just described is God. God yeah. That's right. God possesses all of those. Yes. And he's given us, he's given those same very things to yes. us. That's right. We are the seed of God. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, now, you, say, you said we are the seed of God. Now, if we say we are the seed of God, what is wrong with that statement? And you're going to see how... Even that same word. Now, the, the scripture you just read, the excellent, properly. And you see what he took it from? What he took it from? Scripture. Because scripture must relate with every one of these person, character, and nature in order to give one's eye identity. What is, what and, and who? What is man? Who is man? What is God? Who is God? So you see, what and who, you can just put man and God right underneath. What is man? What is God? Um, who is God? Who is man? Okay, so now he just read there. So now he's saying, we are the seed of God, Zara. What's wrong with that? Well, um, well we're not God. And seeds produce after his own kind. Right. Yeah. Good. And it doesn't say that he created us like we're a seed, like he formed us from the ground and he breathed life into us. It wasn't like a reproductive, like a, how we reproduce type of thing. Because that's why I think also like how Christ um, calls us like his brothers mm -hmm. as well. Like it's not like, um, because they not Christ, we're, Yeshua. Well, Yeshua. Because I don't mean that we're God. Like, if we are seeds of God, that means that we're gods. We're the creation of God, but not the seed of yeah. God. Right. And because now, what that does right there, it dispels the heresy of we are little gods. And it also goes back to Psalms, I think it's Psalms 18 or 118, where... And there's a lot of false teachers outside there, men like Crawford Dollage, mm -hmm. um, Kenneth Hagan, and these people who say, We are little gods! We are little gods! We are evil. They don't understand scripture. When the Bible says, and he made us. Uh, a shall. He made us. N not bara. Esha, he made. And that same, in one word, when he made woman, he used Esha, and when, then when he made, when he made Adam, he used Bara. And Bara doesn't mean to make from nothing. Bara means to make from 
something from the earth. Now, two things going on there. He said, now, and he made man in his salim. And salim, which is translated as image, is not what we think is image, but what does it mean? Darkness. And that darkness, it, it's plain to, plain to relate to it because God is indefinable or undefinable. God cannot be, be defined by physical things. God is non-definable. This is why scripture didn't open with an aleph, but it opened with a, a bet. The son is known in creation because he created all things. The father has never been seen, nor can he be seen by any man and live. It stands to reason. Who sees the father? The son. What happened to him? He died because none can see the Father and because that word they live is Yahya Yada means to be connected with the Father. No, so before that physical man could be eternally connected with the Father, he must. Oh. Ooh, what is sort of see scripture? The way scripture is unfolding your your, 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 your mind. This all come alive. So now, just as this is scripture you just read, but we are not the Zara of God. We are not the seed of God. We are only the seed of mankind. Yes. Yeah. Um, to go off that, we know that Yeshua, the Messiah, he, he's the seed. Because when that seed dies, then life comes from that. If we were the seed, nothing, com nothing comes from us when we die. He is the... No, no, no. You see, no, he, he, just, he just opened a bigger reservoir. Yeah. Because you know what he said? Yeshua HaMashiach Mashiach is the seed we, we produce nothing of ourselves we need him to bring us life so now this this what we just read in Corinthians here I mean in Romans we are the what you call as a result of his death and resurrection his burial and resurrection we become like him in his burial and resurrection. So it's no longer I that live, but he that liveth in us. So now we move away from this heretical doctrine where I am God. As um, these movie stars and TV stars going on proclaiming, oh, I am God. Oprah Winfrey and all the likes and all of them, you know, saying, well, I am God and I see God and God is who I make him to be. And if this is God for me, you can tell me he's not God. Which comes back to creating God in your own image. Again, the word the image is a very destructive word because this is why a lot of people now say we have been made in the image of God and God is like us God we are not made like God it's a, it's a mistranslation mistranslation when he said we have been made in the image of God the Salim Salim of Elohim and that word is Salim Elohim when you read it in the Hebrew not Salim Yod He Wav He Salim Elohim and that in itself um, I don't even have my strongs here. Let me see if I have it. How much strongs? My Tanakh. When he said that we have been made in the image of Hashem. Genesis chapter, that is chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, what? Um, by the seven day, let me Genesis see. Now we're going to see when he say, um, and he made. Verse 7. Not 7, and Hashem God formed a man out of the. Right. Let me see. Yeah, verse 7. Of the 
Yeah. That's verse 7. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Um, yeah. And breathe into his nostrils his breath of life. And, and that soul there, we must have wondered the translation soul. Soul is it's speaking about nefesh, and that's the only relation. And there are certain communicable attributes that Hashem has made. Because when he said now, when he said, what he said, um, he said, Vayi Etsra, Vayi Tsra, Vayi Tsra, Yahweh Elokinu, or Adonai Elokinu. So it's Yahweh Elokinu. So now you're using the first person singular and you're using the second person plural. You're using Yod He Wave and Aleph Lamid He Yod Mem. So you're using the singularity of God and the plurality of God to what? Make man. So God in his creation is using that which has been made and Elohim, which is the, as translated, the, the power or strength or force or winds or nature, which relates to the Ruach HaKodesh, the spirit of Hashem, meaning with time, space, and matter, because all of that he is using to make mankind. So every single thing within creation now is, is attached to this matter that we are. This is why Neil deGrasse Tyson could say we are what? Stardust. Stardust. We are all part of the universe. Foolishness and filth. Yes, there are truths in it. And we can see that scientifically. However, that aspect of our existence, which translated it as soul, is the Neshema. And he breed that Neshema, which is, so now it's, it's two things going on there. He breathing and then his Ruach, the spirit, which is responsible for all creation, all things being what they are, is actually going into the the, 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 the non-existence matter, the inanimate object, which is the matter that he formed. And he's forming that, he formed that from the earth, from the dust. And now he is making mankind, the Ha'adam, Epha, Ha'adama, from the Adama, from the ground. And he is now breeding his nefesh into man and man becoming a living soul. So the matter that he took from what he made, he is now, this is what they call the communicable attribute of Hashem. The communicable attribute of God. Now we're saying he's breeding into us. But that which is, that which we relate with, in this life, which we can't explain, which we can't even understand scientifically, nor um, philosophically, apart from God, is what we all seek to know about. We can't even understand the very essence which keeps us alive. We can't even differentiate when we are alive and when we are dead. Because when you are asleep, how do you know you are asleep and you are not dead? This is why death could come at any, any moment. This is why now you must ready yourself. You must make sure that you are ready to be what? For his visitation. No, people just make it seem so like, if, oh, that is a bad thing. You are only, it's only a bad thing if you are not ready. ready. But it's a good thing. I wish he could come now. Uh, I was glad. But I'll be selfish, right? No matter my loved ones, they don't know Hashem. They don't know Yeshua Mashayak. I don't care. I don't fear to die. Absence from the body is present with the Lord. Yod He Wave. So I'm not afraid to die. This is why Yeshua wasn't afraid to die. It wasn't his time yet. So he moved through the crowd. Shaul, it wasn't his time, so he appealed to Caesar. 
You see, when it's your time, you don't, you don't worry. You say, hey, Timothy, I, I've kept the faith. I finish, I finish my course and I run the race. Hey, now I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Axe man coming down the highway, coming down the corridor. What? Neck gone. He's home with the Lord. He's home with the Lord. Oh God, he dancing. He said, Timothy, don't let no one despise you of thy youth. Don't let anyone. Why? Because these things in this world is temporal. Everything is temporal and is necessary for our advancement, for our building up, for our overcoming. So these five elements relate to human beings and relate to God. This is what you call communicable attribute. God communicated to us. It's not his seed. The only seed of Hashem with seed, not seeds, but seed is Yeshua. He is the seed of God. He is the seed that went into Miriam and impregnated her. The God seed. And he is the one that reconciled mankind to the creator. He is that one. He is that one. He is the redeemer. The goal. Goal Ka, your redeemer. Goal Ka, your redeemer. My redeemer. He's the Goal, the redeemer of all. Because we have been lost, and he's the only one who could redeem us. So, this here is what a person is God is a person, the Father is a person. The Son is a person, and the Holy Spirit is a person. And one of the best place you can find that portion of Scripture, turn to Isaiah. Here, just so I'm looking for I see a cafe in Are you going with me? No, I see a chapter. I see a chapter 48. Look at Isaiah chapter 48. Forty eight, you said? Yeah, forty eight. Yeshua, the Father, always when he is communicating, this is why when he says he made man Elohim, Yahweh Elohimi, Lord God. And you will see it in your Bible, Lord God, because and Lord will be in capital L. Okay? And that means just means Yahweh Elohim. Yahweh, so Yahweh, the singularity of God and the plurality of God. So he's speaking about one and he's speaking about many. The Hebrews and them, they say, well, the, the, the plurality are the forces of all creation. However, we know that is true, but it's not limited to that. So they tend to negate the true essence of what Hashem is communicated to us through his word. Now, when I say the word Hashem, it just means the name, which goes towards Hashem. Hashem, meaning the name, it goes towards all of this. It goes towards the Person, character, and nature of God. It speaks about the essence of what God is and who God is. So this is like the basic foundation 
for all new believers and for any person who coming to know Yeshua Mashiach as Lord and as King and who are looking to follow him in light of what he says in his word. Let's, let's see. Hear what, hear what um, Isaiah said in Isaiah 48 from verse... Let's read from verse 15. I, I have spoken. Yes, I have called him. I have brought him. And he will succeed in his mission. Who will succeed? Yeshua will succeed. Because who is speaking here? Isaiah is speaking on behalf of Hashem. Right? I, I. Right? So he's speaking about the second person. I, I. Right? But yet still now, <clears throat> watch what he says in verse 16. Approach me and listen to this. Approach me and listen to this. Because now he's speaking to all those who are now reading this word. Who are now looking at the planets. Who are now viewing natural creation. And special redemption. This redemptive nature that he has now given unto us. Yeshua. Hamashayach. Hear what he said. Approach me. Listen to this. From the beginning I have not spoken in secret. He have not spoken in secret. He have made all things clear by his general revelation and by his redemptive revelation. So now when the Jews and all these people who choose to deny him, it's right there in scripture. And it's right in Isaiah. It's right there in scripture. It's in Bereshit. It's right there in Genesis. It's right there. However, they choose not to see it because they have been blinded but right now the eyes are opening so the gentle church you go the church is closing bye bye no more gentiles inside just as how it was for israel when they abandoned and rejected the tanakh and he turned for all those who will accept him so now it's going to be to to death for the the Jews, so because he's turning back, all of Israel will be saved. And that in itself is going to all those who accept Yeshua Mashiach, Jacob. Ooh, scripture is deep and powerful. Let's go on. From the time anything existed, from the time anything existed, what well, goes right back to Bereshit, Genesis, because that's the point of beginnings beginnings and we know what existed before the earth and all these things mayim mayim ha yim the water the living waters now we use the mayim ha yim today to what to bury the old man and to raise the new man look at something it it is it, always i so ironic when when most people to date you look at these churches where are they, where they baptize people? In their church, what, what do you call it? A font, right? A baptismal font. But that water is, is what? It's stagnant. So one, every person who is being baptized, they're baptizing in the same, same water. Each person, so if you have five persons to baptize, all of them are going to be baptized in the same water because they fill it up, and they empty it after they finish. So you are baptizing people in what? Contaminants. Stagnated water. Which part of the scripture say baptize people in stagnated water? The sea. All these things are symbolic. Again, the Bible. The drash, midrash. Patterns. The water is a form of baptism when Moshe brought the children out of Israel over the Red Sea. Over the Jordan, symbolic again of baptism. Always these waters that cleanse. And when you read Leviticus um, 26, and you, you see now this is how you shall perform. How you shall use water to cleanse the high priests. And how you shall cleanse them. Because it's necessary that we be washed with living water. Mayim Hayim. 
living water. Who is the living water? Yeshua, he is the living water. This is what the media woman at the well is now. If you know who asks you to drink, he shall give you Maim Haim. Whoa, she said, where, where is this water? Life? <laughs> Jacob and Abraham and them, they drink from this one. He tell me, you have the living waters? I say, yes, I am the living water. And when you drink this living water, there is no way you could be dead. You will be alive. So that water in itself is symbolic of where we ought to go and let this nasty, dead, stinkful, wicked flesh be cleansed by the Mayim Hayim, which is by a river or by the sea. All your cult practices, they know where to go. How they go by the waters and they're doing it by living waters. All the occult, the channelers, and they, they're going there. But you who's supposed to know Yeshua Mashiach, you want to sprinkle or put them down in some type of font and, and have them contaminate, have the, all these contaminants upon the other going one on top of the other. This is why the church is how it is today. It stink. It stink. I didn't say so, you know. Read the script here. <laughs> now look at something. He said, he said, from, from the time anything existed, I was there. And now the Lord God, see, Lord God again. Your hey, wav hey. Aleph, Lamed, He, Yod, Mem. Elokinu has sent me, who is the me? Yeshua and his Ruach HaKodesh. Now, this is one place here, clearly stated, the Holy Spirit, the, 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 the triunity of God. Clearly, right here in Isaiah. Any Jew, any person who have a mind logically could deduce that from what scripture is saying. So now we're seeing that the mind of God is revealed in Yeshua. So we're seeing what is a person? A person is a human being, but not limited to a human being, also known as a spirit being. So is the devil a person? Yes, yes he is a person. Is he a weak person? A very strong person. Should you fight with the devil? Should you want fight with the devil? No. Why you say yes? Fight. 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 Resist. Yeah. Resist. Yeah. So that is not fighting with the devil? No, we are not to fight the devil. We, the Lord, Yeshua has to do that for us. That's right. But we do it through him. But yeah, I, I think a lot of people get mistaken though because in spiritual warfare, people will be like, I rebuke you. That's right. That, and that's, you're not supposed to ever even say that. Because I, I was listening to something and they say because you're essentially praying to the demon or to the devil because you're trying to communicate with it and you're not supposed to. Remember, Christ is the one to do all of that. What Michael say in Jude? I'll read it. Huh? Oh. And Jude, go ahead. You're right there already. Yeah, yeah. You see? Oh, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. You see? That's really good. You see, now this, one, this is what. You see, I'm just first among equals. We are all equal in the sight of Hashem. I'm just first. I'm just. You see, the dots are connected. It says here in Jude, is exactly a half brother of our Lord. <laughs> now, hear what he said, eh? Now, hear what he's saying, which is. We said it again? A half brother of our Lord. Okay, now hear what he says. Go ahead. Jude 1 and 9, yet Michael, the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, the Lord rebuked the Okay, so now who ought to rebuke the Lord? Yeah. Who ought to rebuke the Lord? I mean the devil. The Lord. The Lord. The Lord. So now you ought to go in whose name? The, Lord. the Lord's name. Yeshua said, now I will fight your battles. He will fight your battle. Now he made a very interesting statement. He said, which is a half brother, Michael, which is a, a um, Jude. 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 Oh, Jude. Oh, no, Jude, which is the half brother of Jesus. Very well. Well stated. Well stated. 
Well stated. Now, why do you think I even raised that? Um, I get so perked up. Because it's, uh, he, um, he said Lord. Huh? No, no. no. Because you thought you probably thought he was talking about Michael. That's right. Oh, no, 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 Michael, no, no. Michael, no. Michael's a creative being. <laughs> That's right. No. But you see, now who said Michael is a half brother of, of Jesus Christ? Yeah, I'm, what, what, my, I'm not Michael. I'm um, Satan is a half brother of Jesus. That's right. Mormons. Yeah, all of them, both of them. Yeah, but Mormons and Jehovah Witness. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so you see, you now all those little nuances is because they use the same words but different meaning. Yes. Yes. So this is just a clarification. When we do, you know, resist temptation, or when we do pray again, when we say in the name of Christ or in the name of Yeshua Messiah, isn't that Doing it through him? Yeah, yeah. So can we say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus? No, no, no. I get you. You see? I get careful because I had like this whole realization with that. Like, you cannot say it's you. It's not the word that you are. It's not I. It's not you doing it. Because you can't reduce it. Like, we can't reduce it. Lord has that power. I don't know. I think it's the same when we pray. I pray for these things. The Bible says, resist the devil. Say that again? Resist the devil. Say that again. Resist the devil. Resisting the devil doesn't mean the Lord rebuke you, Satan. No. That's, that's devil worship. Oh, the devil is mighty and powerful and I rebuke you. You're praying. You're worshiping the devil. You know what is worship? Worship is just esteeming someone's name. name. Mm -hmm. You see, Hashem Meaning the name that is responsible for all things. He's responsible for Lucifer. The devil is responsible for? The devil is responsible for? Wait, wait, wait. Satan is responsible for? I don't get it. You got to say what you were saying again. All right. You said who is responsible for who? Yahweh is responsible for all things. You said Lucifer. Yahweh is responsible for all things, mm -hmm. right? Yahweh is responsible for Lucifer. Yeah. Satan is responsible for? The demon. Satan is responsible for? Himself. Say that again. Himself. Himself. Uh, so, I have a quick question. Yes. So like, all right, when I'm, let's say when I'm praying and I um, want to, uh, how do I want to use the word? But rebuke like spirits of like um, discord and you know, yeah. and like you know you're you're rebuking certain thing like spirits of discord or um, gossip and stuff like that. Can you say that? I remember because like I was like researching this very recently actually, and I like didn't know this. Like I'm thinking you know we could be saying that, but we can't. Like that's not our place. Okay, so it, how do you know? We, uh, when it's spirit, like when it comes to confronting right. these spirits, yeah. like these demonic spirits, you have to say it in the name. It's only his name yeah. that can do yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because we what can't say it like after. Of, what about in the name of Christ, I or no? No, because it's he's doing it. Lord, we do the Oh Lord, you know, you're okay. saying okay. like giving him that like asking Authority. him to do yeah. it. Asking him to fight those spiritual battles See, for you. So yeah. even, even here in June. Michael saying it. Even here in June, when you read it, he, he never took on the He plus. said, my, see, even Michael come to understand, except by the power and the grace and the sovereignty of God, that he had no power over Satan. This is why he said, the Lord rebuked him. That's right. Because he understood his position and he was an archangel. Mm -hmm. And they said Lucifer, Lucifer actually, I believe, was a cherub. Yeah, that covered it. Yeah. Cover. Yeah. Lucifer was very close to the throne. Mm -hmm. He, matter of fact, some call him the minister of music. Because yeah. if you read Isaiah, he even said, out of him came pipes. Mm -hmm. Lucifer. Every musical instrument. He, now, what does music, it gives God glory and exhortation. So Lucifer. Yeah. Lucifer was very close to the throne, and it might, he might have even been one of the top angels at that time until he was cast out because of his I, I, I yep. proclamation. Yep. Pride. Yep. 
Because he said he tried to exalt his throne above God in the north. Meaning he wanted to be greater than his creator, which could never, ever be. But here when it says he rebuked Satan in the Lord, meaning he understood his position. He knew he couldn't do that within his own power and strength. So even us, when we, when the enemy comes in, comes to us as a, as a flood, as the Bible declares, when he comes so powerfully all at once, that sometimes become overwhelming, we have to resist him through the word of God, yes. the revelation of God. Yeah. This is why it's important that we as believers quote, memorize, and more importantly, understand what we're quoting and memorizing. Because yeah. there are a lot of people that are quoting and memorizing scripture, but their hermeneutics is not there. Mm -hmm. They do not have, first of all, not to rightly divide the word of truth. The Bible says we must rightly divide. So if we have to rightly divide, I mean, there's a wrong way to divide. Mm -hmm. That's the contrast. Yeah. So we have to rightly divide the word of truth. So it's important that when Satan comes in like a flood, the Bible said he will come. For he walked about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. So so we so we have to stay sober. Um, I come for the fruit of the spirit. Know what the word of God says. So when he comes, we say Satan. Galatia, Lord. Galatia. The Lord. That's right, the Lord revealed. And the Bible says in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Right. Satan must bow to, okay. the, to the yes. Lord. He must bow. He must bow. That's why Jesus, when he was tempted in the wilderness, he always used the word. Yes. That's right. Because he, it is written, it is written, yeah. it is written. For he is the word according to John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was hmm? God, and the word was with God. Hmm. The only problem is yeah. no. follow the word. Now, and here the brother just explain it, and everything you stand upon is the word, and within the context, you must stay and on the text of the word and the cortex of the word, because if you go away from the cortex of the word, not your form is a pretext, mm -hmm. so you're not properly dividing exegetically the word of God. Now, because of the Hellenistic culture which we live in and the word has been Aristotelianized, we have this prophecy and fulfillment subset in our mind of scripture, but you've got to read the scripture from a Hebraic lens. The Bible, Yeshua is a Jew, the Bible was written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. The New Testament and certain part of Daniel, right? However, when you're approaching scripture, this is how you must approach scripture through that lens and no other lens, not a Hellenistic lens. So when you approach it through that, you've got to read it in the Pashet, which is the simple form. What is there? Then from the Ramis, the hints in scripture, the patterns that are there. We went over that, you know, you guys online, you can go back over and look at it. Then you have the Midrash or the Drash, that which is the depth, the four depths that goes deeper. And it's showing you all these patterns that are there repeated, repeatedly until such a time is at hand. And then the sud, the mystery that are to be unveiled to those who know and seize and understand the time. For my sons and daughters, they will see and they know the time of his visitation. And the only way you can know that is when it is revealed and the Ruach HaKodesh is lifting the curtain of eschatology, the end time. He said, no, those who read the revelation, they shall get an extra blessing for they understand the time. Just as Yahud, Jude said, understand the time. Contend earnestly for that which has been given to you. That means to fight. Mavok! Fight and what we fighting with? We fighting with the devarim, the devar, the word logos, which became flesh. So now, if you want to know what God said, you got to know this. If you want to know what God is saying by His ruach hakodesh, you must know what He said in order for you to even comprehend who and what is speaking to you. You know, if it's a demon, if it's yourself, or if it's His word, because once it's Him, it's going to correspond with. A final court of arbitration. Shut your mouth. Let's see what he's saying. Let, 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 let's walk line upon line. Precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. 
it just reminds me why this is so important because look, you have like so many misunderstandings yeah. and then only by fellowship and conversation, not just listening, be able to correct you. This is why Hashem said in his word, there, is, there was never ever when the church or the Judaic council ever sent one man out. You have the um, the priest, which is the cow, um, my God, uh, Cohen, the priest, the Aaronic priesthood, and you had those who were ascribed to that, this Aaronic priesthood, and that in itself, it tells us, it's very, it's very clear. The priest, you ought to live a certain way, and your responsibility was to divide this word and to let Every single person know this word in Israel. This is why no land was given to them. They were, who was their inheritance? Yes, Yahweh. Ooh, they don't want him. Yeah, yeah. We don't want you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want things. We want things. Right? They want things. They don't want him. And when you don't want the Father, you will reject his prophets. And when you reject his prophet, you reject Moshiach. You reject him. So now, where was I? I was saying something. Um, before, be, right, no, we, we finished that. Isaiah 40. And we, 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 we see now where the, the, the three person of the creator is expressed right there. So people will say, that God is one, they don't understand ahadot, oneness. Because that there is speaking about plurality. But we in the Western world, when we say one, we're talking about just the figure one or what have you. But then you gotta understand Hebraic culture. Because one ahad or ahadot is speaking about oneness, just as in John 14, 15, 16, it says, make them one even as we are one. How you can make them one? He said, by thy word and that by the, the, by, um, the truth of thy word, they shall become one. So there is, there is a criterion on how you become one. You can only become one as a, on the basis of a met truth. If there is no truth, you can't be, you can't have oneness. So you can't have this ecumenicalism ecumenical movement in this church as we know it today. You can't have that. You can't have that. Yes? Um, in the laws of nature and science, uh, Hashem, He reveals Himself as one, but of parts. Like hydrogen, the first element, is three parts, but it's one. Okay. Proton, neutron, and electron. Okay. One. All right. There you go. Okay. But it's what? Yeah, no, say that again. Say that again. Say that again. Hydrogen, which is the first element, which is one, right. is a proton, right. a neutron, and an electron. Okay. All necessary to make that one unit. Unit. Because with that, you take one apart, it's not the oneness anymore. You see? So what they say the periodic table is, is, is yeah. it resembles the, um, the uh, alphabet. The alphabet, that's right. We know that, and you know, it's, it's, it's interesting how you brought that up there, and we're going into the character of Hashem, because, right, what is that? Yeah, two hydrogens, one oxygen. This is water, right? And this is a chemical, um, is it a, a yeah, a chemical compound, right? And it's a word, right? And now... Man. What what is that? Yeah. What is this? This is what? Water. What is this? Water. Water, water. You have how much hydrogen? Two. And how much oxygen? Water. One. Two oxygen two hydrogen, one oxygen. How much water you have here? You mean how much mem? How much mem? Two. Which is water. And how much? Um, Aleph? One. one. Oh, wow. So you have three, and you have three. 
your character is similar, something is similar. So without that which is necessary for your existence, which is ma'im, which is water. If you have all the food in the world and you don't have what? Water. You could go longer without food than without ma'im. I am the ma'im ha'im. I am the living water. So you see, you see the... Huh? And the body is like 70%. That's more than that. Yeah. It's, we are so, we are so much water that we can't do without it. And water is a very fascinating thing. They can't even understand water today, how it does the thing, what it does, what it, what it do. of our oxygen also comes from the ocean and only 30% comes from the land. Well, you see? I learned that from Wow. Wait, what? 70% of our oxygen comes from the water. Come from the water, right? From water, right? Right? Think about how many trees they cut down and we're still able to breathe. Yeah. yeah. Because they, when, it, when they're talking about ozone, this and that and the other, they don't even understand creation. Yes. Wait, so wait, the issue is this oxygen. Oh, so that makes the sense. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> it's two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. Exactly. But look at, yeah, that water, yeah. It's one. It's one. So that makes sense because the water has oxygen. Yes. Uh, because without oxygen, they, Baptized exactly, living water. Again, it goes right back to that. Because the water in itself is flowing, it's living. It's not stagnant and anything stagnated, it stinks. So extra water, that means I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, but wait, hey, hey. But what, listen, listen, listen. But what you're saying there is how Hashem has designed woman and man. Woman, Ari, is our connect dog. Is our connect door. Okay. Women are the one that actually make the man into who they are. They have higher antennas. They hear and they receive more clearer to the father. From the father. And they are the one to actually make the man into who they are. However, the man, because when you look at the well, we'll do that another time, and it's here. Because <laughs> uh, 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 uh? Okay, all right, yeah, let me don't leave you guys hanging. Now, when you look at Ish, Ish and Ish, right? This is man and this is woman, right? This, this here is. Right? When you take this yod out and this hay out, what do you remain with here? Fire. You have ish. Which is fire. You have fire and fire. So you have two types of fire here coming together. That is what you have an explosion. Marriage without Hashem, Yeshua, is an explosion. This is why marriage can't last. Because they take the yod and the hay out, which is, which is life. And the life only comes from God. Yod, hay, wav, hay. So now, when you take the name of God, the name again, Hashem, or Chaye, or even Chayeh, all these words is life. Chayeh, hey. Because same here is life. When you take the name of God out of what it has been designed for, and we were created in the salib of Hashem, meaning we have that life, that connection to Hashem, and it has been broken because of Adam. So now Yeshua is the one who called us now to connect us back. Yahayada. Meaning he is the now you have you know God. Yahayada, which is the last aspect of the five components of man's neshima or, or soul or, or psyche or spirit. In Hebrew, you have five aspects, some even deeper studies have seven, right, which speaks about the completion. But five, I only stop at five. There's a lot of studies, I neighbor. <laughs> not, I, I see, I neighbor is not Christ, eh? so don't hold my tape. And I wouldn't go into it. But what is happening here? We're seeing that. Man and woman, as they are here, they can't exist without the Creator. 
Now when you look at Adam, right, and um, what's the word? Adam and, oh, I forget the word. No, oh no. no. Wow. wow. Your mind is really, <laughs> your mind is, don't ever trust your mind. Don't even trust minds. <laughs> don't even trust minds. Right? When you look at this name, because Yahweh is in everything that he created, is in everything that he created. And when we understand a person, character, and nature, and this is the... Thank you very much. Yeah, you see? Like, but Ray, you only help me. That's why we don't trust your mind. That's, that's right, you see? You see? But again, but also that's a word to right? That is a word to be. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy, right? Or you will be, or that which is causing to be, or to become, right? So you see, all of them too is, is like words that has this creative bent towards it. Now, We're dealing with person still. Now we're looking at the person of the creator. What is what he made us with and by, we relate to him in so many ways. Look at something. This is mankind. This is all mankind. This is Adam. Now when you when you look at this Adam, Numerically, and this is Gametria because in Hebrew, Gametria is another way of how these how the letters are written because each letter has a name, a meaning, a picture, a sound, and a numerical value attached to it, and it's called Gametria, right? Also in the Hebrew mystic, mis, mysticism, they use it with Kabbalistic and what have you. However, this is not. Uh, misunderstand Kabbalistic teaching from the true teaching of what Hashem has disclosed in the scripture. The, why each letter has been numbered and numerically aligned is so that even when scripture is rewritten and preserved, it is identifiable to him who has called it. This is why with the Kuhlman's code when it was found just recently, we see that it correspond to that which they had for over a thousand of years in the cave, it correspond, nothing different. You might just have, uh, let's say, words variances, variances like either a, um, like, like a, like a hay or, or hay. Right, and that is a, this is a big difference, but very, uh, very minute, and it might, might, and might be with with these variances, it's it's understood what is being communicated, but very little variances, if none at all. So now, with this, with the mind, with the person of God. And he is in all his creation, and he can be seen in all creation. With his prize in, his prize creation, which is mankind. Watch what went on. Adam. Right? In Adam, the Aleph is one, the, the Dalit is four, and the Mem is 40. All equal in how much? 45. Now, <clears throat> when we calculate this here, this is. 10, this is 5, this is 6, and this is 5. This is equal to 26. But this doesn't relate to this, right? But yet still God must be in it. Now in Hebrew, it is coming what we call Milui. And Milui is when you spell the name out. Yod. Y O D, Yod, He, He, 
אלף, ה, וו, 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 אנד, ה, יוד, אמ, ה, אלף, ה. So if we, if we add this up, יוד is 10, וו is 6, is 4, יוד is 5, 1, 5, 6, 6, 5, 1, 5. How much is it? 53. 53? No, I did something wrong. I did something wrong. I did something wrong. Eh? I don't know. If, if, if you're getting 43 or 50 something, I did something wrong. Because I can't get 52 or 50 something. And I think I did something wrong. 54. Eh? I still did something wrong. Yeah, four is in the 50s. No, it's, I still have something wrong. I, my eyes Let me see. Fine. Yod here. That's 20 and 11. Yod here. 1 plus 12 is 43 plus another 11 is 54. 12. Um, here. Yeah, it's 54. No, no. Are you crazy? That's, that's true. <laughs> you see? Now I'm watching it. I'm watching it now here. So how much you get in now? Wait, what number did you erase? No, this is hey. I really I spell it hey hey. Um, Instead of hey. You spelling the word it? That's 38. Huh? 38? Nah, that can't be 38. That's 26 and 12 is 38 plus 6. It's 44. Oh. 44? Yeah. So what do you want is missing now? That was 45. Is it 45? 45. 44, 45. I can't, I'm missing something. I can't you see. You got three sixes, 18, 18 plus 1 is 19, 19 plus 5 is 24, 28. So this is 20, this is 6, this is 6, and this is 12. 8 plus 6. That's 18. 38 plus 6 is 6 and 6, 12, 13, 14. It's 44. Yeah. So what do you want is missing? That's what I said. What do you want is missing? Yeah, so only one is missing in a relationship. No, oh. wav. Wav. What's wav? Wav. That, that's six. That's six. Oh. Yeah. Wav. You get wav. Or vav. Hey. That's the word. Hey. It's just like a breath. Caleb. His name means Brett. Caleb. So this is going back to what your statement about women having antennas and stuff when you were explaining that, right? All right. Yeah. With, with um, well, the woman. Yeah, the woman will come in with that. Yes. Okay. Thanks for that. So now look at look at look at the nature of God, the nature of God in mankind through the Milui. So you're seeing. This all now equal, and now when you put the one in, well, this here instead of being 12, it will be 13. So it will be what much? 45. So you're seeing the nature of God spells out is linked with what? The nature of man. So the very nature of man from the Hebraic perspective is seen in the name of man and in the name of God spells out. So in your here, what I've here is man, the secret of man concealed, and which is seen only in Yeshua. Now look at look at this right here. Quickly. You must we come down here to close. Look at something. And that is God, right? Which is Yahweh. Which is Yahweh. Now in the Adam, what you have in Adam. In the Adam, from the Adam you have you have father 
and mother. But remember, this is how much? 45, right? So the bet is two, the aleph is one, mem is, and this is? So now when you add this up, how much you get? 44. But it's looking like if it's not the same as what? Adam, right? Why it is not like that? Because remember, when I showed you the ish and the share, which is the man and the woman, when you test take the man and the woman, right, and you take the father, the you take the he and the yod out, God out of the picture, all you just have is what? Fire. Now, watch what happens. This is why you have atheist and agnostic. When you could take God out of your creation, and you could say we just came from what? Monkeys, animal, we are evolved mammals. So now you are just left in what you call DM is what? Blood. This is what you call dam in Hebrew. And if you're doing any type of medicine or what have you, you will see that the word for blood is dam. And all life from human being comes from the blood and Yeshua said, Hashem said, don't what? Eat the blood for the life is in the blood. However, the life that is in the blood needs the alif to exist on this earth. So now this is how now you become a father and a mother is when you add the alif to the man and woman relationship. So you see, even in this relationship, is exclusive to man and woman. And man and woman can live in this type of relationship without God. You don't need God to live. You don't need God to live as an animal, a beast, a predator, but you need God to be what? Sadiq, Kodosh, holy and righteous. So without him and he is what? silent when you just live in here as a father or as a mother and we know today men are getting women pregnant and they're leaving them so they just what they are just what they want to call themselves fathers but they're not even fathers they're baby daddies women being pregnant they say i don't need a man get rid of the man we just need their sperms to carry out what our procreation so they're just mothers but mother from man's perspective, not mothers from God's perspective, because a mother and a father constitute a home, a bite, a house, where father and mother comes out, and you find they have the whole Adam. This is why it's only in marriage you can have this. Adam. That union. Outside of marriage, you have father and mother. Man, woman. Ish, ish, fire, the explosion. Children being made. Procreation, not family being built. Was that clear? All right, so let's move on. That was a, a two weeks and a, how much? 20 seconds. Was clear? Understand? No, go ahead, what? No, because it, what, why I asked you to explain is because oh, yes, yeah. um, you made the comment that. Um, the antennas of women could be some is some is higher higher than and be, you know you need a woman to kind of when you're in a marriage the wife is what actually kind of molds the husband right so what i was tr um asking you to clear up is because you know that's why you have like um women pastors now who think that they can pastor men so that's why I, I kind of wanted you to kind of play that out. Yeah, All right. Yeah, and you kind of All right. Yes, I went off on a tangent. This, you know, this is why you all have to help me. Keep on course. All right. Women weren't designed to lead men, and it's only because of the fall. Women antennas are higher 
than men own. They hear quicker from the Father. They are more given to adhering to his voice rather than men. Men have short antennas, so they're very close-minded when coming to discovering new things. But when they do catch it, they, it's certain. This is why men are known to be protectors and women are, are known to be caregivers because they give care and nurture to the household and men brings protection and security to the household. So women hear quicker and sharper from Hashem. They hear quicker and sharper because of their ready state and availability to the Father because they are the um, Ezor connector. Ezor meaning helper, connector meaning the, the one who opposes the very nature of she, that man, that self-driven naturalistic bent. She opposes that. So she now becomes that continual friction on that man. So now a praying woman you don't despise. This is why the Bible says in James, if is in James, right? If um the prayer of an uh, uh, the, the prayer righteous man uh, much uh, but if 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 you, you you are not right in the eyes of hashem he would um if you don't have your relationship is not good with your wife he would not even hear your prayer it's necessary that your relationship with your wife be on point first before you can even go towards the father on behalf of yourself or anyone else it starts with this horizontal relationship here on earth before it can go to the vertical but this is a dilemma where you need this relationship first before you go go there that is only in marriage but you need this relationship first before you go into marriage so you see the vertical is it precedes the horizontal so this is why now even with children we need to teach them um, am i answering the question all right. Um, so, in, in with, with the whole institution of family, this is why. And as we have a child dedication today, the Bible says, "Now train up a child in Proverbs chapter twenty-two, verse six. Train up a child in the way that they would go. That when they grow old, they will not depart from that path or that way that they reach. Why is that? That institution is necessary. Now, when you go into Proverbs chapter twenty thirty-one, he say now and." And, and she does her husband well all the days of her life because she, she, he is known in the gate. She, 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 um, she gets up early and she prepares for her household and she do all what is necessary for, so that her household and her children rises up and call her blessed because she has been taught and nurtured and nourished in the things of Hashem. So now without... The parents training up that child in the native admonition of the Lord, which is by the person of who they are all now in Christ and the person of God in relation to his communicable attribute, that nature and that wholeness of that child will not be known by that child for they know to what? Be pleasing first to their husband, second to God. Because if you can't be ple first, pleasing to yourself you can't be pleasing to anyone which goes back to identity so your identity can only be known in Christ in the institution of the family the home and from the family and the home then you move on to your family and your home so it start and that's the domino effect we have in this relationship that we have been called to that clarify? All right. So we all we all clear with that. All right. Anybody have any question there? Because so, I just want to move on quickly. I just want to finish off these two. It will just take like no, 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 ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. It's not. It's not going to take long. So that the person, the character. If you go to Gal, Gal, um, go to Galatians chapter. No, that not um, Ephesians. I say Galatians. Yes, sir. Yeah, Galatians chapter five. Galatians chapter five. Five twenty-two. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. The character of God is expressed in this Genesis, um, Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. Somebody want to read it for me? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Right? Against such things there is what? No law. No law against such things. So now, which one of these characteristics you think this be the hardest to keep? As we observe people today. You say patience. Go ahead, let me hear. Which one? Which one of this characteristic you think this be hard, hard, hardest to keep? Self-control. Self -control. Yeah. Yeah. Because it kind of all falls under, everything else falls under that, in a sense, when you read it. Yeah, what do you want to say? Um, I don't know, because I'm thinking about self-control, and there's like a lot of, a lot of these people, like even people who don't believe in God, they practice self-control in a lot of degrees, and even like other religions. It's like a form of religious, religiousness in a way. I'm, I'm not saying people lack it. Like people say they lack self-control, but I they operate in it in different in a different arena. Like the Buddhists, like the the Shintoists, the Hindus, the the Muslims, they have they're very very rigid in their discipline and their activity when coming to self-control, prayer, and all that which is uh, is necessary to fulfilling their requirements in their religion. Love. Okay, she said love. So now we see what is, what is, what is, so we can say, so we say this, this is not lacking, we can achieve this. However, do we see this among Christians? No. We don't see this among Christians, no, okay? No. We don't, see, we see it among other faiths. Yes. We see it among other belief system. The atheists and they, they have self-control, yes. Being that all other religions are from Satan, what if they find success in those things because they're not seeking the truth? It's not in truth. World, but, people have world but, 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 yeah, if you're in the world, just like you see, you know, um, celebrities and people having all this money and things, they right. believe to be success. The same way the occult has success, or the same way, wouldn't these religions find it, have an easier path to get Satan's? They're fully fooling them, you know? Right, they, they're fooling them, but, but they're self... They're operating in a different arena, but it's not a true, you know... But how do you understand or differentiate what is truth and what is false? Yeah, right. They don't have this. But, yeah, they don't have it, but then... I would think it would be easier for them. Oh, my God. You, you will think it will be easier for them, right? <laughs> Which line is different? Which line is different? The curved one. Huh? The curved one. <laughs> That's not a line. What do you mean? By definition, uh, is is not a line. I know. I was trying to. Get it. <laughs> they're the same. They're identical. You said they're identical. The top one is wrong. Why the top one is wrong? It's off the mark. It's off the mark. They both kind of are not. No, but <laughs> you made a dot first, didn't you? Well, this, this all right. Yeah, you made a dot. You made a. Oh, yes, you made a dot. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, I guess it's the, the, the yeah, bottom one is off. Now I can see the huh? even one. No, the top one's off. The top one's off. Yeah. Right. And why is it off? It's missing the mark. Missing the mark because there's only one line to identify what? 
Truth. Truth. Yeah. But what is similar to truth could look like yes. truth. Exactly. But what is looking like truth is not truth. truth. And if it's not truth, it could look like, yeah. but then it, how could you even come to clarify what is the truth? Right. Yes. This. But how? How? With your mind. Yeah? Right. With your mind. But basically, with these same premises that we are now breaking down here. Love, joy, peace. What we see self-control can be very deceptive because self-control has to do with what? Reality. How people behave. If you're not living with a person, could you know that for 100%? No. You could only know what you see or what you relate to it. Gentleness. You could only know what you relate. Faith. It could only be what is spoken or what is confessed or what this world take to be faith, but this basically is very pragmatic. It's very foundational. Goodness. You could be good. Look at all these aid, all these um, oh, non-for-profit. Philanthropists. Okay, a non-for-profit organization. And most people think, oh, they're from God because why? They're feeding the poor. Are you like who is it? Like Oprah. Like Oprah, that demon. Yeah. That devil. The devil. All right, that devil. Who created so much? Well, <laughs> well, if you don't, if you, if you're not even able to identify the the Kenny, the Benny, and the what is it called? She the one the big earring. I mean, um, Joyce Mara, Joyce Mara, and Paula. If you can't differentiate that these are demons and highlings, how you can even uh, differentiate with 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 with, with um. Someone who just go Oprah and how to call this how to call this guy who who have this show now and always he have a stink mouth and he always do the show. Bill Meyer? No, not Bill Meyer. No. He's a he's a he's a renowned atheist. Yes. Um, the a comedian guy, the, Steve Harvey. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm a Christian, you know. I'm, I won't get in there. And these people, how they call them? They call them what? They call them. They call them. Um. They call them. Um. Carnal Christians. This is the characteristic of God, and we must relate to that characteristic. And the only way you can relate with this characteristic, you must be in in Christ. So what, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stop here and I'm gonna continue next week on the person, character, and nature with identity of Christ. Okay, because now we have. Um, the offering up of the baby and we have communion to do so let's let's move right on to the offering up of the child one time yeah. all right so let me just um okay all right so let me just um you guys, you guys with me? All right, let's listen. All right, all children are a gift from Hashem. Could somebody find um, John three one and four for me? John chapter three. Yes. And remember, we we just read Proverbs, right? Train up a child in the way that they would go. Without the parents training up a child, and <clears throat> with training and nurturing that child is a responsibility not only of the parents but of the community. We all have a part to play in the life and welfare of a child. And if we don't institutionalize that, then that child will be a product of whatsoever environment they, they are now exposed to and with. Okay? So, um, somebody find Genesis 1.28 for me. Um, some of the prime Proverbs 17, 6, and, um, all right, so who can read Genesis, uh, I mean, J John. no, no, third John, yes, yeah, John 3, 1 and 4. Third. Yeah, 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 what, what, John 3, do you got the, yeah, the epistles of John, John 3. Wait, three John? Yeah. Or, or John chapter three John? Three. Or? Yeah, J yeah. You can't say John three. You have to say three John. Say, 
Are you saying John? Are you saying She understands me, right? The 30 pistol of love line. All right, I know I'm not, I wasn't crazy. I have Proverbs in here. All right. Read um, the, uh, one, um, 3 John 1 3 for me. Yeah. <laughs> one four, one four, one four. Yeah. One to four. Yeah. The elder to my dear friend Gaius, I love you in the truth. Dear friend, I pray that you may prosper in every way and be in good health physically, just as you are spiritually. For I was very glad when some brothers came and testified to your faithfulness to the truth, how you are walking in the truth. I have no greater joy than this, to hear that my children are walking in the truth. To hear that my what? Children are walking in the truth. The children. The only way a child can walk in the truth that they must be taught. Who have, what is the next one I said to, um, to get? Genesis. Genesis 128. Six. So for a child to walk in the truth, the child must be here. The child is not becoming, but the child is here. And for that child to walk in truth, we must have Proverbs 22, 6, right? We got to train them up and nurture them. Without that, they can't know because we, who, they can't understand, they can't receive without someone. To, go ahead, read it for me. Genesis 126. Yeah, 128. God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and every creature that crawls on the earth. God also said, Look, I have given you every seed bearing plant on the surface of the entire earth, and every tree whose fruit contains seed. All right. So now we're seeing that that child is as a result of that coming together. And they ought to have what? dominion over all these ideas and concepts that we are speaking about. They ought to rule and control these ideas. They ought to give an answer about these ideas that are there. All right, what I said, um, Proverbs 17, 6. Children's children are crowned to the age, and parents are the pride of their children. Say that again. Children's children are crowned to the age, and parents are the pride of their children. Right? Children, children. Children, children. You see, the way appearance is joyous is when that child walk in the fear and admonition of Hashem. Uh, did I say another scripture? No. Alright, somebody get Psalms 131, 113 and 9 for me. Found it? Go ahead. He gives the childless woman a household, making her the joy joyful mother of children. Hallelujah. I read from 13 now. Read from 13 to 16. 113? No, it's same 139. 139? Yeah. 113. 113, right. 113 verse 9 and 139, 13 to 16. For it was you who created my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will praise you because I have been remarkably and wonderfully wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know this very well. My bones were not hidden from you when I was made in secret, when I was formed in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw me when I was formless. All my days were written in your book and planned before a single one of them began. All right. And it just shows that all children are a heritage of Hashem. The Bible say is like arrows in a man's quiver. That's what children are. Because when they come into this world, we actually take them, as Proverbs 22 says, and we nurture them and we form them into the arrow that they ought to be. So when we shoot them, we are shooting them into a desolate, destructive, vengeful, wicked, demonic, occultic environment that is what we do when we make children and they and they are and they, they come into this world you know what we are literally saying we are literally saying to Hashem that 
we know what you have done, what you are saying, what you are continuing to say in our life, and we are taking these children, we nurture them, we form them, and we are now going to place them in what? In that casement that you have given us, and we're going to shoot them out into the world. So even as we offer up this child today, we are saying and we are giving unto Hashem, spiritually, symbolically, that which he has given unto us for a time and a season, that we are preparing them for the onslaught that is before them. And this last passage of scripture, somebody read it for me, read um. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Because you see how in this life everybody wants some type of letter or certificate or what have you. When we baptize people here and we offer up children here, we don't give you no certificate. None. None. The first death, you get a certificate from who? Government, right? I mean the first birth. The first birth. So that birth is in relation to man's account. And they need this paper to see this document. However, the second book is of great importance. And he said, I will sign your name in the Lamb's book of life. He's signing it. Not me, not no one. So read what is, what, what is going to, what, what is it? Read from one. Read from one to, 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 to three. Go ahead. Read one to four. Uh, go ahead. Corinthians what? Three, one to three. One to, one to six. Go ahead. Three. Three. Yeah. One, two, six. Are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Or do we need, like some, letters of recommendation to you or from you? You yourselves are our letter, written on our hearts, recognized and read by everyone. All right. Recognized and read by everyone. So now, the certificate is on you. Is on that child. We ought to now make that imprint there clear. You are the letters. We not. Re we don't need it from men. Recommendation or affirmation of men. It's written on the child, and we ought to ensure that it is. Go ahead. It is clear that you are Christ's letter produced by us, not written with ink, but with but, the spirit of the living. But with the what? The spirit of the living God. So not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God. Go ahead. Tablets, but on tablets that are hearts of hearts of flesh. So bring that child. Let's offer up this child. Did you ever see that video of the priest jumping at me? Oh my God! And they said it in the. And they, they, the parents, they were did you see like, the their faces look like some of them, when you see the video, they slap in the kids. And, oh my gosh, that's demonic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the, I think that was some part of that. I see one, he's trying to turn the little things like backwards. Yeah. You see that too? Yeah. Yeah. He's like trying to break it. The man look for that? look like he Bye, love you. Bye. 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 Shalom. Shalom. Um, uh, bring that oil. Uh, how many oil there? All right. Open it for me. And well, there are, there are complex scriptures in the. In the Tanakh, where it speaks about how the priest ought to anoint the child, and what they use then, they use blood from the ram or from the lamb, and they also the anointed oil. The oil, the slaughtered ram, takes some of its blood, and this is from Genesis chapter, um, Exodus chapter 29. Take some of the blood and put it on Aaron's right earlobe, on his son's right earlobe on the thumb of their right hand and on the big toe of their right feet. Sprinkle the remaining blood on the side of the altar. And this was how they preserve the priestly, the Kohen, 
the child is a Kohen. We are all Kohen. We are all after the order of Melchizedek. Right? And why anoint the heir? Because we dealt with that before. We're talking about the pay, we're talking about the Ozen, we talk about the Ayin, which are all connected because we hear Hashem to our heir. Why the Bowen, the Tom? We need the Tom because it's, it's what actually brings everything in our mind into reality. Why we need the feet. Every plate our feet may tread upon, the toe is for balance. It goes back to the Ozen, which gives us balance. Without your toe, you can't stand straight. You can't stand. You can't be sadiq. You can't be righteous and upright. So it, all with all this outward demonstration, it speaks about what is going on in this child. So now what I'm going to do... I'm going to anoint her heir so that she will always hear his voice. We're going to anoint your fingers so that you will always do the things that he will show you to do even as your antenna goes up to heaven. We're going to anoint your toes because you shall always walk in his path. And you are going to know him as you walk. We're going to anoint your head. Because you will know him. You will yada him. Your eyes. Your pay. Your mouth. And your nostrils. All that you are. We anoint you. Because we offer you up. Into his arm. As a token of his love to us we offer you up Tamina Jesus. Hannah Lilam we uh, offer you up uh, to Hashem uh, we give you back to Hashem uh, and may you walk may you continue to proclaim may you continue to exalt and hear him in your night of rest and joy and comfort in Yeshua Mashiach's name, we offer you unto him. And we say, be Kodesh, be Sadiq. In Yeshua Mashiach's name, amen. amen. Go out into this world and be a devil crusher. Holy bonus. And please him, even as he is pleased with your birth. In Yeshua Mashiach's name, amen. Amen. And that is what Hashem told us to do. We don't need letters of recommendation. We finish with um, that um, yes. the, right. So all these letters that we receive from all these institutions, what does it do for us? We hang it on a wall. It says only when people come, oh, you baptize. Oh, I see you baptize. Yes, I baptize at um, some big name institution that they will call. But they can't see him on their life or in their life. Right? So, you want to come off the or All right, no. No, I'm good. Okay. So now, we are going to partake in his body symbolic and his blood symbolic wine the bread and wine the matzah and the yain the wine and this is what he this is what happened in the night he was eber tree the last supper and just as a husband going away to prepare the house for his bride until he comes again and he said, now, do this in remembrance of me. Turn to 1 Corinthians 11. Uh, yeah, you can read it. Go ahead. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, yeah, you can, yeah. 1 Corinthians 11, 23. For I have received from the Lord... That which I also deliver to you. That the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. 
And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brethren, when you come, to, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. But if any is hungry, let him eat at home, lest you come together for judgment, and the rest I will set in order when I come. So far, the scriptures. Amen. Amen. Now, as I always emphasize, when we eat and we drink, we watch for each other. You can't be a sinner. You can't be a partaker of the world. You must examine yourself. You must give your life over to Christ. It must be cognizant, you're conscious in your being. Because when you do this, you are saying, I am dead to sin. I'm dead to the element of this world. I'm alive to Christ. Because if you do it, I am not the judge, I'm not the searcher, and I'm not the seeker, I'm not the Ruach HaKodesh. All I can say is that if you are a sinner, if you don't know Yeshua Mashak as Lord and as King, if you didn't give your life totally over unto Him, don't partake of this. This is not transubstantiation, what these Catholics can do, killing Christ and we're and, and we killing Christ every single time. No. This is symbolic. This is a symbolic act that we remember in what He did on Calvary. And what He has done is so set that we walk in the newness of life. And when we eat and drink this, he makes us whole and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, that there is no contamination and hate in us. Because his sadiq, his kodesh, his holy, righteous act is in us. And that is where we are. So just as the matzah, See how it's burnt with hole and stripes. So, to, so too he was on Golgotha, on Calvary. Just figures. Barakata hat Yahweh Elokinu Malek Haolam Hamitsi Lachem Mem Hairitz. Blessed are you, Hashem, King of the universe, who brought forth bread from the earth. He brought forth this bread from the earth. Let's see one. Let's see now I come. Body of the Lord, broken for you. Body of the Lord, broken for you. Body of the Lord, broken for you. Take him. Body of the Lord, broken for you. Body of the Lord, broken for you. Body of the Lord, broken for you. Lord, 
This is the body of the Lord broken for you. When you eat this, know that you are partaking in his finished work and his imminent return to his bride. And as you do this, do this in remembering of him that what he the price he paid, you definitely will pay it with your life. And are paying it right now. Eat and be made whole and be cleansed from all this functionality. Eat. The blood of the Lord shed for you. 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 Barakata Yahweh, Elokim, Elokinu Malek, Haolem, Bara, Pere Ha Gofen. This is the blood of the Lord shed for us. The wine that we now, this fermented wine that we now utilize. What it does, it brings to remembrance that which he has left for us. And the taste it creates in our mouth, it salivates, it brings all things to remembrance. It makes our, it, it awakens every single aspect of our taste element. It salivates, it, it, it brings a longing and a thirst for more. And this is why we use wine. And this is fermented wine, fermented. fermented grape wine, which we are all f um, familiar with, which is peri, which is the fruit, right? The grapefruit, the peri, the fruit of the hagola, colen, the vine the fruit of the vine. So when you drink this, know that his blood that was shed for you and I is continually being remembered. And in our lives, we are now living a demonstrative life for all those who would see him in us and through us. Drink and be made whole. So this brings us to the climax of our service today and we hope all mind has been brought to rest with the offering up of this beautiful child. It was a beautiful evening where we we bury some dead today, and we left some dead corpse in the ocean, and we brought out life, Maim Haimim, out of the living water, who is only known in Yeshua Mashiach. And we are now his new creation, set forth to share his good news, his life, his basat, all those who will accept him as Lord and as King. So, 
even as I close and pray. Heavenly Father and King, even right now. Father, we thank you for your word that has gone forth and that has resonated in our mind, in our dot, in our love, in our heart. And Father, we thank you for your Ruach HaKodesh living and dwelling in our midst. We thank you, Father, for all that which is being done in our environment. And we thank you for working in the lives and heart of all those who continue to come here and continue to, to seek you and to know you and to exalt you in spirit and in truth. For we are your Talmudims. We are your sons and daughters. Call to carry out your good news, to know you and to make you known to all those who so desire you. We thank you for working with us. We thank you for showing up in our midst and pleasing us even as you are pleased as we exalt your son, Yeshua Mashiach, in all things what we do. We thank you. In Yeshua Mashiach's name we pray. And we all say, Amen. 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 Look at the way I live, it proof is positive. Look how my words are formed, inspiration from the Lord. If you receive the song, it will keep you from doing wrong. If Christ becomes your norm, through him you will be strong. Don't play with me, I am life. Uh -huh. Don't play with me, I am life. Uh -huh. Don't play with me. I am life, uh -huh, uh -huh. I am a child of Christ, yeah. don't play with me, I am life, uh -huh. don't play with me, I am life, uh -huh. don't play with me, I am life, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I am a child of Christ.